All right, so let's get started reviewing this past released AP question. It's a part two question. It's a free response question, so there's no multiple choice here. Uh, and some people really like these areas because they can really expand their thoughts here and not, they're not tied to a choice. However, just so you know, if you go look at this question up, I did make some changes to the question to concentrate some of our skills here. All right, so there is a few little Grotsky doctoring going on here to make this a little more challenging and to, of course, uh, combine more skills into one. But the skills we're going over are what's on the AP. So in any case, what we've got here is a galvanic cell. If you uh, look at the question here, question two, what we have um, is we have uh, in question two here a galvanic cell. All right, now the galvanic cell is right here, okay? And this galvanic cell is, um, of course, right there. And this galvanic cell, all right, uh, has, of course, an anode and cathode. And the first question, if you look down, they're asking for which one is the cathode. Before we get there, you say, oh, my gosh, we're going over uh, voltaic, galvanics, electrochemical cells. You said we're doing this redox 2.0, Grodsky. We're doing this for the second time. Why are we bringing back um, the galvanic cell? Which you remember Luigi Galvani, right? But Luigi Galvani, okay, was the individual who, with... Um, Alessandro Volta helped spur the first battery. So this, of course, is a spontaneous cell. Well, I'm bringing this back not so much to review electrochemical cells, but to look at it from a different perspective, especially right at the electrodes. If you look at the electrodes here, platinum and platinum, okay, notice they're not going to be involved in this reaction. What I'm trying to do for you here is look at the battery, the voltaic or the galvanic cell. They're synonyms in a new way, in a way that we're using, okay, um, uh, complex, okay, chemical uh, redox reactions. That's what we're after. We're using these complex reactions that will pop up. Uh, when we did the galvanic and electrolytic cell, we stayed primarily with more simpler half reactions. Now I'm kind of reintroducing this with the more complex reactions and the balancing skill that we learned previously. Okay, so in any case, the first step in this, as you can see, the question is labeled the cathode. All right. And so the, uh, if you look at what was given to you, you're given a standard reduction potentials. Notice they're all written as reduction. How do I know? I see electrons are written in the reactant side, which means they're gaining electrons. We call that reduction. Leo the line says, Gur, gaining electrons is reduction. OK, why? Because if you gain electrons, your charge drops. And we re, re, again, I'm reviewing the same concepts. All right, so look at iron plus three goes to iron plus two. And somewhere in this second half reaction, because we're gaining negative, someone's gaining them, okay, the charge is dropping. And specifically, that would be the MN plus two, okay? And we'll get to those details. Notice the standard or the individual reduction potentials that give us some give us some measure of what spontaneity remember these are voltages voltage is a potential difference and more importantly it tells me a direction a pathway the spontaneity so clearly um mno4 plus uh, eight um protons hey we studied acid bases and gaining five electrons this second reaction has a much larger pathway because of a bigger positive voltage. Okay, notice on the AP, they do not give you a full standard reduction potential. They give you the ones you need for the question. I kind of like that. It, it concentrates where to look for information. All right, you're not flipping all over the place. So they want the cathode. They want the cathode. Okay, so I've got to figure out who the anode and cathode is. So as a review, and we're constantly reviewing the same things, but looking deeper, we know that the mnemonic is anox red cat. So I'm looking for where reduction occurs. All right, well, I can't and I do not have any clues in, this, in these um, half reactions that make up the overall reaction. The clues, of course, are the fact that they're talking about a galvanic cell. And we should know that that, my friends, is spontaneous. And if it's spontaneous, we know that the overall voltages will be positive. Positive volts means we're flowing from a high concentration of charge to a lower concentration of charge. And if you've got a lot of negatives in one area, it's going to flow to smaller numbers 
of negatives because a concentrated area of negatives of charge is a concentration of high energy. High energy likes to disperse. Heat flows from hot to cold because of what we call entropy, the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, we've been through this. Okay, so if you look at our two choices, very easy. How can I figure out if these are the only two half reactions? If you notice MnO4, the permanganate ion is over here, and the iron ions are over here. Okay, notice the salt bridge is there as well to remind you that this is a galvanic or a battery or voltaic cell. So if I look at these two choices here, which combination? Now remember, they're all written as reduction half reactions. So you don't have a redox reaction without having oxidation and reduction. Someone has to gain the electrons. And, of course, the electrons are passed from the one who oxidizes, Leo. Remember Leo the lion? Losing electrons. So the, ox, the one that oxidizes loses electrons, and one that gains the electron gets reduced. So one of these two half reactions has to be, or half cells, has to be responsible for giving electrons. So again, the key here is galvanic cell. We're trying to make it positive. So party people, what do you think? What com who has to be flipped? One of these reactions has to go the opposite way, and we change the direction, we change the sign. So if I was to arbitrarily pick the second one, then I would be flipping this sign, and this would become a negative and if I had a large negative to a smaller positive, the overall value would be negative volts, and that would be non-spontaneous. So clearly, pretty simple stuff here, okay? I'm going to have to flip the sign of this one. This reaction has to be flipped, because when I flip this one, it goes negative, and it's a smaller negative compared to this positive. The numeric 0.77 is smaller than one point. 1.49. So the only combination that gives me an overall positive volts when I have to flip one, I have to flip one, one has to oxidize. Okay, so clearly this is written the opposite way. And I'm going to do that, okay, because I'm going to have to determine the overall balanced chemical reaction. So I'm going to write it right here for our viewing fans. Okay, so the first one, let's make this up close and personal a little bit, is that we have iron plus 2, okay, going to iron, plus 3, plus an electron. Notice I just flipped it. What was once a what? Product is now a reactant, okay? And I'm changing the sign here. I'm not going to forget that, that this is overall negative point, what? Uh, point seven seven volts. Now, this is clearly oxidation, okay? I flipped the sign, so now I'm showing oxidation. So, party people, where is their iron plus 2? Right here. So, what happened is iron plus 2, okay, let's clean this up. Iron plus 2 is going to iron plus 3, okay? And along the process, it's sending an electron. Now, you see, wait a minute, why is platinum involved? How come platinum is not in the overall reaction? Because platinum is a noble metal. It's like gold, it doesn't react. So we love to use platinum metals when we have electrodes. Remember, electrodes are metals where the redox occurs. It doesn't always mean that electrodes are part of the oxidation reduction reaction. Some batteries and some electrolytic cells, they are. Electrolytic cells, they are. But in this case, platinum is given like we used what? We used carbon electrodes, graphite. Okay, they're pretty unreactive. So in any case, electron is sent. And as you remember, electrons, if this is going to be oxidation, remember we're going from Fe, what? Plus 3 to Fe plus 2. Okay. And I... have Got that backwards because I'm tall. So when we have Fe plus 2 going plus 3, we know that, and I don't to see the half reactions written, it's written over here. Okay, so Fe2 goes to Fe plus 3, an electron, of course, is given up. And so this must be the anode. Because oxidation is occurring, this electron is pushed. Okay. Now, in truth, okay, if it really isn't pushed, right, it's not very good. 
and oxidizing. So in truth, it's being pulled by the terrific what? Reducing half reaction. These guys reduce really well. In truth, we have a strong oxidizing agent, as we've talked about before, that's pulling on electrons. In last night's lecture, we talked about how to identify oxidizing agents. This really attracts electrons. So really, it's um, this electron here, okay, is being kind of pulled by the what? by the permanganate ion, very important ion. So it's kind of pulling electrons, okay? And when it does pull an electron, or some number of electrons, it won't be a one-to-one, -one, it becomes Mn plus two, right? There's your half reaction, okay? So that makes some sense. Now, of course, this is reduction because MnO4 is gaining electrons. It's the one that has to stay this way to make the overall voltage positive. And the reason this works is because MnO4 is an extremely strong oxidizing agent. And for reasons I, I'll explain again, I want you to be able to identify this. Here's MnO4. Okay, it's negative one. Let's go find the charge of the the charge of the Mn. The whole thing has to equal negative one. That's the giveaway here. Each oxygen is negative two. It's two electrons away from being stable. And there's four of them. Two times negative four is negative eight. What charge of Mn do we have to have in order to make the overall charge be negative one? Plus seven. So the manganese ion is plus seven. So we've got a plus seven ion. Oh, think about Coulomb's law, how attractive that is. And then we have four oxygen atoms it's bonded to. Oxygen, we know, is very attracted to what? Electrons. So these guys, oxygen, attract the electrons. And when they get close enough, they get pulled in, okay, as an electron sink to the Mn. This is, an, this is a classic oxidizing agent. All right, so in any case, we found the cathode. Okay, where reduction occurs to be here. So all they ask you to write is, hey, identify the cathode. Of course, uh, electrons always go from anode to cathode. They're not asking you to um, write the arrows, but you could have done that. And clearly, reason why this is spontaneous is because of this chemical. It's strong oxidizing ability. It helps other things oxidize. It's strong oxidizing, which means it gets reduced. And how do I know it gets reduced? The Mn okay, plus 7 becomes Mn plus 2. Its charge went down in the process. Okay, so let's go to the next piece of this, and this is basically what we did uh, last night. Let's determine the overall balance chemical equation for the galvanic cell below. So we have, we flipped the first one because that had to oxidize for this to be overall positive. Okay, so this is the second one. Now, when we balance this, Let's not start with, and this is what makes this a little bit challenging. Um, if you were given this to balance, it'd be given uh, iron plus two to plus three. They wouldn't give you electron, but you can figure out that's the difference of an electron being given off. And they would give this also. They would give um, the following. They would give you MnO4 negative, and they would go to what? Mn plus 2. That's how it would be given to you. Okay, it's very important you get that. Now, because well, I'm telling you right now, these guys right here, okay, if you try to balance, okay, with this given, it's going to drive you really, really insane. I, you probably could work it out, okay, um, but I want you to go from this point here. All right, it's, uh, you probably could figure this out, but I want you to work from this point here. So, in any case, we've got those values. So, um, the first half reaction is pretty simple. The, remember, the first rule is to balance all things, okay, that include the chemicals. There's one Fe here, and there's one Fe here, and then we've got to balance the charge. There's no water, no oxygen, no hydrogen, so we just balance the electrons. So the rules that we learned uh, last night or previously, okay, follow here. You balance... Um, you balance your O's, you balance your H's, all the things here. So this has none of those rules there, so it's a very simple half reaction. Here comes a more complex one. All right, first off, let's balance all things that, are, that aren't oxygens or hydrogens. We have one Mn, and we have one Mn. Okay, good. Now we have four oxygens. We need to balance those oxygens with water. That's the first step. Notice I have four 
uh, O's here. And so I'm going to write, to balance those, I'm going to write four H2O's. You say, well, why do I do that? I do that because, well, there is, what, an oxygen for one water, so four waters would give me four oxygens. That's why I'm doing that. Okay, so that's hopefully you see that. Now, by balancing the oxygens with water, remember these things are happening in an aqueous environment, so that's easy to do. Now we've got to balance the hydrogens. Now look here, I've got what? I've got four times two, right? Four times two, I have eight H's and I have no H's over here. So I'm going to balance that with eight protons. This is happening in an acidic environment. We talked about um, acidic or basic environments. These complex redox reactions occur. So there, there goes that. All right, and now the H's are balanced. Now I have to balance my charge finally with electrons. Okay, so if I looky here, and let's just make this a nice -y color. Okay, so if I looky here, this overall charge here, okay, is going to be 8 plus, that's a negative, so this is plus 7. And over here, you know, water is a neutral compound, so 4 times 0 is 0, and you have plus 2. We have to make sure that charge is balanced. That's very important here because it's about the conservation of charge because electrons are not destroyed, they're not created. So, to get this to be plus 2 on both sides because, well, this side's not going to be gaining in electrons. This half reaction already has an electron on one side. So this is my oxidation half reaction. This is my reduction half reaction. So electrons have to be on this side. So how many electrons and on what side will make both sides the same charge? Well, plus 2 is what we're after. So I'm going to need, okay, I'm going to need, I'm going to need 5 electrons. Oops. Okay, so... Uh, five electrons. So if you look at my charge now, a negative five and a plus seven gives me a plus two, and I have plus two on both sides now. Okay, and if you look carefully, okay, we can see that we did what? We created this, this, and this. So you notice that these values came out of our rules. Okay, try balancing with three things on, on both sides or two and three. It becomes very complex. So our rules created, okay, our balancing rules created this. All right. All right, now, the final thing in half reactions that are balanced, we have to balance our electrons. Okay, so if you notice, we have one electron being what? Released and five electrons being absorbed. Now, you could have saw, you could have saw that here. I get that. But I'm, this is, I'm kind of doctoring this so that we can um, uh, do this, uh, have, have balancing kind of practice. So, of course, I'm going to times is this side by 5, by the distributive rule. And this would give me 5 here. This would give me 5 here. And this would give me 5 electrons here. The key here, party people, is I'm trying to, okay, I'm trying to balance the electrons. Trying to balance the electrons. And once I balance the electrons on both sides, this reaction is balanced. Next step is that I am going to um, cancel. Five electrons, cancel. We should have no electrons in our overall reaction. If I had water on, on, an, on, on this side over here, I'd balance, but I don't. Okay, so put this all together. And what do I have? I have eight protons plus... One permanganate ion, MnO4, negative, plus five iron plus twos, gives me five iron plus threes, plus Mn plus two, plus four water molecules. Now, I understand they gave me this half reaction, but I may give you this half reaction without this stuff, and you would have had to figure that out. Okay, so that's the overall. All right, so now they want you to calculate the value. Now, the value, of course, is positive for the oxidation here, positive right here, right? The is, is positive 1.49 volts, and the overall net E0 of cell, which is the... Um, the electro potential or the overall voltage of the cell electro okay is going to be when you add them together if you need to put in your calculator oh fun you're going to get uh, a value of positive overall 
0.72 volts. Okay, so that would go there. So your overall net potential for the entire cell is positive 0.72 volts. If you remember, because I multiplied by the distributive property, I do not multiply this by 5. Okay, do not. This value here. Remember, this is a pathway that's dependent upon how well iron plus 2 becomes iron plus 3. And as we can see, it's not a great pathway. It's got nothing to do with how many of them. That's important, okay? It is affected by the concentration, yes, as we can swing that U diagram. Ooh, okay. So moving on. So letter D, how many moles of electrons are transferred? And this is where you need the balanced reaction. When one mole of the permanganate is consumed in the overall cell, what's the ratio of permanganate to what? A transfer when one mole is consumed in the overall cell reaction. All right, well, if you look carefully, all right, and again, in the overall reaction, it doesn't kind of give it away, but you do know that for every one of these, there are five electrons that had to be what? Absorbed. So how many moles of electrons are transferred? That's such an easy thing. For every one mole of MnO4, there are five moles of electrons. Now, on the real AP question, all right, as I kind of gave you, you could have circumvented, navigated around the balancing, but I want you to understand where these values can be can come from, okay? So understand that I did a little extra work here to make you understand where this comes out, and this is an important skill that can help you see these questions a different way. So not a very difficult question. Okay, you can see that this 1 to 5 ratio is right in the half reactions. All right, so let's move on to the next page here. All right, so uh, now this one I did not doctor. Okay, so we're going to kind of work from the, the, uh, the as written. So a sample of ore. Okay, now ore party people is usually a uh, rusted form of some metal. So if you look at the question... Okay, the ore here is going to be tellurium oxide. Okay, if it was iron, it would be iron oxide. Now, what happened? Well, the metal, who normally holds on to electrons loosely, okay, exposed to oxygen, who for reasons we've explained loves to grab these electrons, will form a positive ion when it loses electrons, and this one, this gains, becomes a negative ion. Notice we use negative 2. And what we're going to have is ions attracting each other to make a salt. Okay, so an ore is basically the rusted form of that metal because of the exposure to the oxygen. Okay, so that's what they're talking about. Now, they told you that anyway, but you should know that. Okay, so when we mine ore, okay, what we're trying to do a lot of times is make it purified. And that's not what this is about yet. Okay, so we have the mineral tellurite, okay, or tellurium oxide. This was dissolved in acid. We have an acidic solution. The resulting solution was then reacted with a solution of potassium chromate. Party people for the millionth time, what does that really mean? Well, the K pluses will come off, right? Because it's a group one ion. And so what we're really saying is we're adding it to a Cr2O7 negative 2 ion. Okay, that's what they're really telling you from our experiences here. We have to be able to pull that out now. Okay, so that's where this comes from. All right, the unbalanced come equation for the reaction is given blue. All right, so the first question is identify the molecule ion that's being oxidized. Okay, so who's being oxidized? Now, if I'm being oxidized, okay, that means, of course, I'm what? Losing electrons is oxidation. My charge is going to go up as I produce electrons into my product side of the equation. So I'm looking for something that's going up in charge. So in order to answer this simple question, we have to assign oxidation um, states. Okay, so let's go do that. And let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to show you, this is a skill that we learned over the summer, just kind of reviewing. We're constantly working on these simple skills. This is a point on the AP. So here we go. I know oxygen likes to become negative 2. 
on a periodic table, oxygen likes to gain two more electrons to become as stable, okay, as neon. So we have two of them. So two times negative two, the overall charge due to the oxygen is negative four. This whole thing has to equal zero. How do I know? There's no overall charge given to the ion to this compound. So this must be plus four. And because there's only one tellurium, tellurium is plus four. Let's move on to the this is called a dichromate ion. You don't have to know that, okay? But you had to know that that's the K2, CR, the, K, the, the potassium ions created that, or the, the potassium salt of this called potassium dichromate delivered this ion. Same thing, oxygen's negative two for reasons we've kind of explained. There's seven of them. Seven times negative two is negative 14. So the overall charge due to all the oxygen is negative 14. This thing has a negative 2 charge, doesn't it? So therefore, party people, this whole thing has to equal negative 2. Okay. Well, this has to be what? Negative 14 plus what number is a negative 2? Okay, plus 12. You can do that simple math, right? All right, but chromium's not plus 12 because there is what? Two of them. So if the overall charge to chromium is plus 12 and there's two of them, the individual charge is plus 6. Good times. All right. H plus is plus 2. And let's keep, keep on keeping on with the rest of these. Oxygen is negative 2. There's four of them. Okay, it's negative 8. I'm not going to start with the tellurium because I don't know which charge it could be, but I'm going to start with the H in front. H is in front scream positive. Hey, Aren't those like acids? Hey, they become protons. Hey, there's individual H pluses are plus one. There's two of them, so this is plus two overall. There was no charge written for this compound overall, like there is for a chromate ion. So this has to equal zero. So a negative eight and a plus two equals zero when you have one more number. So that would be a plus six. And because there's only one tellurium, okay, tellurium is plus six. Okay, and they already gave you plus 3 for chromium. Don't have to do that. And if you want to, the negative 2 for oxygen. Negative 2 for oxygen. No, we can do this. Negative 2, negative 2 overall. This has to be 0. This has to be plus 2 overall for the hydrogens. Because there's two of them, each one is plus 1. Okay, so let's go back here. All right, so the question is, who, okay, you got what? Oxidized. So oxidized means you lost electrons. So your charge is going up. So let's look at our choices here. We've got tellurium plus 4 going to plus 6. Hmm. Tellurium plus 4 is going to tellurium plus 6. Why is its charge going up? Its charge is going up because it lost negatives. So identify the molecule that is being oxidized, okay, or, or ion, they didn't want to give it away, it's going to be tellurium oxide. So the answer here is tellurium oxide. So TeO2 is the one. Now, it, it is tellurium plus 4 that's getting oxidized. However, it's not really loose. So when I talk about the molecule or ion, I have to write the entire compound not just the tellurium. I know specifically tellurium plus four is what's actually gaining electrons, but because it's bonded in this formula, this compound, I have to write the entire compound. That's important. That's different from the regents level that you may have learned. Okay. Now the B wants the oxidation number of chromium in this chemical. Well, we did that already. And we found out it was plus six. Okay, so that's plus six. So they, in this case, they're asking specifically about the chromium in this compound. A little different question. They wanted the molecule that had the element that got oxidized. So make sure you got the difference there. So each chromium is plus six. Okay, and if you notice, plus six chromium went to what? Plus six chromium went to plus three over here. How'd it go from plus six to plus three? Hmm, its charge went down. We call that reduction 
charge goes down. It's called reduction. That makes sense. Why? Because it gained negatives, as we'll see in the overall balanced reaction. So next is balancing the reaction. All right. So we're going to start with what's given to me. Now, I am, just like I did for the first side, I'm going to eliminate H plus and water. That's going to appear in my balanced reaction, balancing the oxygens. So let's start with, um, let's be crazy, and let's start with tellurium oxide in order. So we have TeO2, and what is it becoming? h 2 TeO4. Notice I'm not separating the Te. This was Regents chemistry. You might have put Te plus 4 by itself and then Te plus 6. No, we can't because the Te is locked in this compound. All right, so let's take out our rules here. Let's balance all things other than hydrogens and oxygens. Well, there's one tellurium and there's one here, so there we're good. There we're good. Now let's balance your oxygens. We have two, okay two oxygens here, four here. So way to balance my oxygens is put two waters on this side. So I'm going to put two waters, right? Because each water has one oxygen. So two H2Os. Okay. And that'll give me four oxygens on both sides. Okay. What else do I have? Well, now I have, okay, careful, careful. Let's change the color. Not make us. Now I have two times two, four H's. I only have two H's over here. So I need to have two more H pluses. So party people, oops, let's go over here. So party people, I'm going to have to have two protons. So I balance the what? The H's with protons, this being in an acidic solution. Okay, we're using acidic rules. Okay. All right, so I think I'm all balanced. I have four H's on both sides. I have four oxygens on both sides and one TE. What's not balanced is charged, okay? So if we look at charge, right here I'm zero, right here I'm plus two. To balance this off, okay, I need to have some electrons. Isn't this about electrons moving from one place to another? So I could put two electrons on this side. If I do, this side would be negative two and this side would be plus two, and that, of course, is not correct. That's your check. Your check with this is to make sure both sides have the same charge. So I'm going to add some electrons, okay, right here, two electrons. And why did I do that? So now this charge is going to be zero on this side, and now it's balanced. Okay, so that half reaction is done. All right, not too difficult, even though we call it advanced, but it's the real way. Okay, now let's go on with the other half reaction. Other half reaction, we have the dichromate ion. I know potassium was involved, but this is net ion, right? So the potassium is just going to spectate. So we have Cr2O7. And we make the what? If you notice, we have the chromate ion right up top here. So I'm just, just using. So the chromate ion is where the chromium became, or the chromium in there became. Okay. So Cr plus 3. All right, cool beans if beans are chilled. Now, first thing I balance all things other than oxygen or hydrogen. Well, there's two chromiums here. There's only one. So I'm going to have to throw two here. Okay, you can't lose a chromium ion. Okay, it's got to be on both sides. All right, moving forward. Okay, let's continue on. So now our chromiums are balanced, but our oxygens are not. So I have to add, you got it, seven water molecules because each water molecule has what? seven oxygens and this will give me what 14 h's that i balance with what 14 protons this should be getting easy now all right so let's take a look at take a look at charge here this is positive 14 or no it's not because this is the dichromate ion this is negative 2 right so ooh, this is positive 12 altogether okay and this don't forget 2 times chromium is plus 6 okay so to balance this uh, we're going to need some, what, six negatives over here to make the same side, so we're going to add six electrons. And if your other check here is that your two half reactions should have electrons on two different sides. One, one of course, is what? Losing them. This is the oxidation half reaction, right, because we're losing electrons, and here we're gaining them. All right, last piece is balance everything off. Okay, so let's make this, uh, I don't care, it's overall, 
Okay, so we're going to notice that we can't balance our electrons. So the next step is to, okay, draw our electrons. So this is six electrons. This is two. So we're going to multiply everything. Let's get rid of this right here by three here. So I'm timesing by three because three times two gives me six electrons. But I have to distribute that. Three times two is six waters. Three. Three. Three times two, six. Okay. Now I can what? I can cancel my hearts away. Six electrons. Okay. Now, notice there's 14 protons here and six protons here. This is a net overall reaction. So we're going to wipe off six protons. And then 14 minus 6, hey, we've got 8 protons remaining. Yes. Okay. So that kind of goes by the wayside. And then we have, look, 7 waters, 6 waters over here, and then 7 waters. So this is going to go bye-bye, and we're left with what? 1 water. You know, I guess I, I guess I don't need to have the 1 there, because if you have an apple, you have 1 apple, right? And then what else do I have standing? I have um, 3 tellurium oxides. Let's make our arrow. Don't forget my dichromate ion, Cr2O7. And then I've got two chromium plus threes. And I can't forget my one water left. And also I have three H2TE04. And what's our check? Our check is, of course, to see if our charges is the same on both sides. So a plus and a negative 2 gives me a plus 6 overall. And this is a zero charge. So is this 2 times this is what? Plus 6 overall. I am a balanced reaction. Good times right there. All right. So now that's it. OK, moving forward. Let's see what this says. In the procedure described above, Okay, all right, 46 milliliters of a 0 0.030109 molar potassium dichromate delivering the dichromate ion was added to the ore sample after it was dissolved in acid. Okay, acidic solution. When the rea chemical reaction had progressed as completely as possible, that means that this reaction went as far as it could go, the amount of unreacted dichromate ion was determined. Okay. So this reaction went as far as it can go, and what they're saying, party people, is that this was the limiting reagent. Okay? It's a tellurium oxide. So they must have added what? Excess of this guy. So uh, this was limiting reagent, and this was my excess chemical. All right. So this was added after it was dissolved in acid. So this went as far as it can go until we ran out of the tellurium oxide. And then we have some excess. Okay. So I want you to understand something. This is a titration. They were adding what? Notice who was gaining electrons. Who was actually going down in charge? The chromium. So this was the oxidizing agent. Hey, for the same reasons, I got a plus six and two of them, right? And then I have seven oxygens, okay, that are pulling electrons in. So this is an incredible electron sink, okay? So this was losing electrons to this. That's how this worked, correct? Yes. And so although this is not acid and base, don't fall in love with this. I want you to learn from this, okay? We added more than enough potassium, uh, I'm sorry, dichromate ion here to drive tellurium into its new form. But we had more than enough. So we overshot the equivalence point. But this is not adding acid and base. We added more what? Oxidizing agent than reducing agent. And we had excess. And look what they gave us, party people. They gave us volume and they gave us molarity. That should scream to you, hello, we can get moles. So in the process, the total amount of uh, dichromate ion can be determined if we use that. Okay, now it was added. Okay, so we did that. Now, the amount of unreacted dichromate ion was determined by titrating the solution with something else. 
So my friends, what were we doing is we overshot the endpoint. Any reason why we would take excess dichromate ion and add it to the ore? Yes, some of you guys are answering. This is a back titration. We added more oxidizing agent to drive the reaction as forward as possible. And hey, this was a crushed ore. We're trying to find all this salt, okay? And so you might have crushed into a powder, but it might be hiding, so we're trying to get all of it. So we added excess just to make sure that all of the tellurium oxide has been converted into this form here. Hmm, sounds familiar. Not an acid and base back titration, but a redox titration. Oh yeah. So when this chemical reaction had progressed as completely as possible, the amount of unreacted was determined by back titrating. So let's talk about this. Okay. We had what? Tellurium oxide, O2. And there was a certain amount of it. And what did we add? Change the color because it's so important. Okay. And so what we did is we overshot it. This is the reducing agent. Oh, Christmas. Reducing agent. This is the oxidizing agent. Okay, and this, of course, was what? Cr207 negative 2. We overshot it. We have some excess. So now what are we going to do? What's the point? The question is, okay, okay, the amount was determined of the excess was determined by titrating the solution. So they want to figure out how much excess, so they're what? Titrating back with what? Figure out what iron nitrate to. What is FeNO32? In your, this is a two here, sorry. I'm getting excited. Each nitrate from your table E is negative one. There's two of them. So this is iron plus two. They kind of give that away. So we're going to titrate back the excess with iron plus two. And you could figure out how much tellurium, ha, 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 okay, was actually reduced by doing a back titration, a back redox titration. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. So here we go. Here's the reaction. We take the excess and we back titrate. Now, this is an oxidizing agent. So itself is getting reduced, right? It's grabbing electrons. So this must be getting oxidized. All right. And if you're losing negatives, your charge goes up. Boy, we've seen that before. Correct? Right? So this guy's charge is going up because it's losing negatives. And this is plus six going to plus three. It's going down. I need you to understand what this means. It's so cool. It's the same thing. But now we're using acid base. I'm sorry, redox. So a volume of this was used to reach the equivalence point. The equivalence point, equivalence point for what? The equivalence point in terms of where the what? Moles of electrons lost equal the moles of electrons gained. All right. So cool. All right. And that's what this would be right here. All right. So first, the question states, count the number of moles of excess that was titrated. Well, we can get the moles of iron nitrate, don't I? I can get the moles of iron plus 2 to relate it back to the what? Cr207. I got to figure out what their ratio is in a balanced chemical reaction, the stoichiometry. I don't know if it's one iron plus 2 for every one of these. So I'm going to have to balance my reaction. This is not acid base. This is not a hydroxide to a proton. These are an, an, an acid base. It's always a one to one. But here it's not. So I'm going to have to balance. So, party people, we have to balance this complex what? Yes, half reaction is so much fun. Let's go. Now, what are we going to get rid of? Just so we know. Uh, let's talk about a new color here. Let's get rid of the H pluses and the water so we don't confuse ourselves. All right. So, first step, let's start with iron plus two. And I'm going to go pretty fast here because it's easy. Iron plus two to goes iron plus three. I know electron here because the overall charge is negative one. There's no what? Oxygens are hydrogen, so I'm done. Okay. Cr. Okay. And uh, Cr. 207 negative two becomes chromium plus three. Should give myself more room, but hey, I'm tall. Now, I'm going to balance this what? O7 with 
seven water molecules. That balances the water. Okay, well, that gives me 14 H's I have to balance. Oh, I'm ha I have to balance the chromiums. Two there, two chromiums, two chromiums. Now, balancing the H pluses, it's 14. I use 14 protons. And now I have to look at overall charge. This is plus 14, negative 2, plus 12. And as you can see, it looks very similar to what we just did above. Okay, we're going to need six electrons. I need to balance my electrons. There's six electrons here. There's what? One electron here. So party people, I times by what? Six. Okay. Six. Six. Electrons cancel. Put this all together. What do I get? And then we do the math. We have plus 14. what what's the whole point of this i want to go from iron to chromate ions what's the ratio what is the ratio iron plus two there are six iron plus twos to what one dichromate ion hey there you go all right so that why and you can see that right there so kelvin number moles of excess that was titrated so that's pretty darn simple there I'm going to start, start with um, what they gave me. They gave me what? Way above here. Let's get to the black here. Make this all serious now. They gave me the volume of the iron plus 3. So I have to relate the iron plus 2, right, in the excess that I'm titrating back here. So I want to convert that to liters for reasons ad nauseum. So let's do that. So I have um, point. Remember that was... 9.85 so really quickly we can make this pretty we can do um well we can just make that into liters pretty fast right um dividing by a thousand that gives me point zero zero nine eight five moles of fe i'm just going to say fe plus what fe plus two that's what this is about okay now what was the molarity? Okay, well, the molarity is 0 0.110, which is a mole per liter, and that gives me moles. Okay, and we can make this pretty um, and, and, and keep going here. Okay, so what does that give me? It gives me 0 0.001835, and what's that moles of? Moles of iron plus two. I know I'm doing this in steps, okay, but I want to make sure you understand what we're doing, and we're going to relate this back. I want to make this to what? The dichromate ion, right? Cr2O7 negative two. What's the ratio? Oh, Christmas. You got to get rid of iron plus two. That's why we use our units. So iron plus two, iron plus two, and I want the dichromate on Cr2O7 negative 2. And what's the ratio? Okay, there's 6 to 1. Beautiful. And this will give me moles of the dichromate. So there you go. So take your 0 0.010835, divide by 6. And what I get is 1 point... I'm losing my sig figs here. They gave me, what, 3 and 3. So my answer is going to have 3. So 1.81 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of the dichromate ion. Cr207, negative 2. Cool beans. Okay. Question is, cutting the moles that reacted with the to tellurite. Well, wait a minute. I have the total moles that I titrated back, hey, I have this value right here, right? Now I want to know the to just what? This value right here. So what was the total moles of CrO2? Hey, go back here, right there. Does this look familiar? Let's go find those moles. So I'm going to do it right here. So 0 0.046 liters times what? 0 0.0. 3109 mole per liter. So let's times that together. 0 0.046 times 0 0.03109. What does that give me? 
that gives me 0 0.00143 moles of what? Dichromate ion. 0.00143. So going down here, if I know that 0 0.00143 moles of Cr2O7 negative 2 were used totally, it's the big arrow down, okay, how much reacted exactly? Well, we had the excess. How much was the excess? Well, we found the excess to be what? This right here. So it's just going to be 0 0.00143 minus this number here, minus this number. So this minus 1.81 second function EE to the what, negative 4. And what I get is I get 0 0.00125. Or 1.25 times 10 to the negative 3. This should be very simple, what we just did here. This big arrow down was the moles that we just calculated above. We figured out just now how much excess that we had. I subtracted just to get what? How much reacted with the tellurium. So you can guess what the next question is. What's the mass in grams of tellurite that was in the ore sample? Okay. So, now that I know that I have what? 1.25 times 10 to the negative 3 what? Moles of Cr2O7, the dichromate ion. And what's the ratio between the dichromate ion and the tellurium? oxide T -O -O -T. let's go to the balance what's the ratio hey there's three to what three to one hello stoichiometry three of them to one so that guy goes bye bye and what they want grams okay well i find the what i find the molecular mass of this and when you do that I don't have to show you how to do that anymore. I know that because moles on top, one mole is equal to, when you add up two oxygens and one tellurium, you get 160 grams. That's a nice one to memorize because you use tellurium oxide all the time. All right. And so when you do that, party people, you get 0 0.6, carry three significant fear, ending zeros count, grams of tellurium oxide. That was such a great way to show you how we get into complex redox reactions into um, redox titrations with a back titration. Cool beans, hope this helped.